Shein is releasing its new credit card to reach Mexican shoppers. They are targeting them to tap into Latin America's second largest economy in the face of issues with China. And this video, we will explore Shein's new move into branded financial services, its attempt to build brand loyalty in Latin America, and the emergence of informal Shein resale markets across Mexico. But before we get into that, I am Elle, and welcome back to my Ethical Fashion YouTube channel. I upload weekly, so feel free to subscribe. So let's get into the basics of the Shein Mexican credit card. So Shein is making its first ever branded credit card, which is launching technically in Mexico. This is a huge move because they've never done this before. They've never explored branded financial services. And they're doing this now by teaming up with a fintech company called Story to create this initiative. And it will be backed up by MasterCard. It will be available globally to too, and Shein is especially focused on Mexican consumers who have traditionally faced limited access to credit. And the timing of this release, I must say, is also very interesting because it comes during a time when Shein's rapid expansions faces obstacles, including global scrutiny for its overproduction and exploitative practices. Now, some people may say this credit card is part of a broader strategy, you know, to build brand loyalty. It's good to encourage consumers to shop more. You gotta make them go to the website. <laughs> And this credit card can actually really tap into NCC Mexican everybody. consumers and give them more affordable options. And this is especially the case when Story has been able to get 3 million clients from Mexico in the last four years. So now we're going to explain the perks of Shein's credit card. So what does it actually offer? Well, every purchase made on Shein's website will earn users points with double points awarded on clothing purchases. And new card holders will also get a 250 point welcome bonus to kickstart their shopping journey. And Shein's idea here is to make it as easy as possible for you, the consumer, to shop frequently and on their platform, and that the points are a big motivator for that to happen. And for the purchases outside of Shein's ecosystem, users will be able to earn one point no matter where it's made. And interestingly enough, the Shein card has a super high approval rate, 99%. Can you imagine if you're the 1%? But I don't think they're actually rejecting anyone. And these credit cards will be in the shape of both digital credit cards and also a physical copy as well. And this move is clearly designed to attract first time credit card users. And Story has even confirmed that the card will only be available to new clients. And again, Story has 3 million clients in Mexico. So this partnership means rapid growth for both Shein and Story. Marlene, who is Story's chief growth officer and co-founder, noted the partnership's significance. She said, we are very proud to be the first partner in the world with which Shein has made this kind of alliance. We have created a tool that facilitates access to credit and rewards everyday use. In addition to always ensuring that users receive information on how to use it responsibly, she said. And Shein is not the only one with the eyes on Mexico. Timu has been eager to tap into the rising demand of the global middle class across Latin America that are often unable to afford the cost of European and North American brands. So Shein offers you know, these lower prices, it's already somewhat been able to tap into these aspirational shoppers that have lower income. And Shein has also been linked to opening up a manufacturing site in Mexico last year, although no further developments have come out. And such a move though would allow it to deliver products more quickly to expanding growth market and bypass these fractious trading sanction and issues between the US and China. And we cannot, we cannot overlook that Brazil has become one of Shein's five main markets worldwide and the largest in Latin America. Shein has even announced a hundred $15 million of investment over the next few years in Brazil to establish a network of manufacturers there. And now let's get into the rise of informal Shein reselling markets in Mexico. So yes, while Shein expands its financial reach through this credit card, there's another trend happening in Mexico, which are these local Shein resale markets. And they're informal. They're run by resellers that have popped up all across Mexico, capitalizing on the demand for affordable fashion. These resellers typically buy unsold or returned 
and Shein items directly from the company's manufacturers in China, and then they resell them at a massive markup in local street markets or in physical storefronts. And Shein is aware of this and has stressed to its suppliers that they are not authorized to sell its products on any other platform. However, many of it actually ends up marketed on private WeChat groups that are run by manufacturers looking to contact these resellers in these countries like Mexico. And these informal resellers then provide an affordable alternative to higher priced fashion brands in their local area and have become a very go-to option for these lower and middle class consumers who don't want to shop for trendy looks without spending too much money. And this setup has allowed people to shop Shein products despite not having any online payment methods or even reliable internet access. And Mexico's informal Shein boutiques have really capitalized on Mexicans' lack of trust in digital businesses and low connectivity rights in large parts of the country. The main reason Mexican shoppers are hesitant to buy online is for fear of being scammed when they make a digital purchase. And it's interesting to note that Amazon has considered Mexico a priority market, yet there has been low trust, a big consumer focus on cash use, and a massive lag in shipping infrastructure in the country, which has actually led to very poor online sales. So local Shein resellers have really leveraged this digital success of a brand like Shein and the mistrust around digital transactions in Mexico. But who are these resellers? Well, they're usually women and have built a consumer base that allows them to buy bulk orders between 50 to 100 items at a time that they know they will sell. And they know their customers are looking for a face to trust, especially when they don't trust Shein because it's so cheap and also have the tendency and desire to pick up the items they place in person at a store. So Mexican resellers, how does it actually really work? So some resellers even keep their original tags on the items they sell. They even attach a small how-to guide on each case to inform customers on how to further order items in the future, which is often selecting any item on the Shein app or website, sending them the link through WhatsApp and making a 50% advance payment to them, and then waiting 15 to 21 days for the order to arrive. Some resellers don't even offer shipping fees and can give options for pickup. Resellers can actually end up keeping almost 60% profit, making good money, given they may be offering the same prices on the website and app, and resellers can be found in any Mexican state operating under these unofficial Shein boutiques in low-density urban areas or places with lower, lower income brackets. And there are at least five such boutiques in this location, which I don't know how to say, which is a municipality in the state of Mexico. And unofficial Shein boutiques have also spread in Guerrero and Oaxaca alongside Puebla, which are three of the poorest states in the country and have the lowest internet connectivity rates in Mexico. And Shein has asserted that we recommend that consumers carefully identify authenticity and assess transaction risks when purchasing goods with Shein's logo outside official channels. In order to protect sales rights and experience, we recommend consumers to buy our products from Shein official channels. However, brands like Shein are facing rising scrutiny over their environmental and labor practices at an all-time high. So we're going to explore those, the ethical and market implications. We must consider these as fast fashion giants like Shein are evolving their strategies to capture emerging Latin American markets. In this case, introducing a branded credit card isn't just about providing more payment options. It's a calculated move aimed at increasing consumer accessibility and brand loyalty. We must consider the following to address ethical and market implications. One, consumer debt and overconsumption. By introducing a credit card with a point system and promotional benefits, Shein is encouraging shoppers to buy more. While this may drive short-term sales, it risks pushing consumers, especially those with lower income or limited access to financial literacy and resources into cycles of debt. Even if credit card models lower the barrier of purchasing items, it could also lead to an increase in unnecessary consumption 
production, fueling waste, water, and a perpetual cycle of low cost, high volume, fast fashion purchases. So the second point is environmental impact. With enough clothing to clothe the next six generations, the next six generations, Shein's approach highlights the disconnect between fast fashion business practices and sustainable consumption. Any strategy designed to boost sales directly opposes environmental efforts to reduce consumption and address textile waste in the fashion industry. So each purchase enabled by a Shein credit card translates to more resources being extracted, more textile waste, and ultimately more environmental degradation that contributes to climate crisis. And my third point is the impact on local economies and resellers. So in cities across Mexico and Latin America, resellers are capitalizing on fast fashion overstock, bringing Shein items into physical spaces such as urban markets and unofficial Shein boutiques. This reselling trend builds Shein's brand visibility and trust within local communities, which inadvertently expands its reach and market penetration. For some, reselling is a means of economic empowerment, allowing individuals to earn an income from Shein's products. Yet this contributes to the brand's legitimacy and further ingrains it within these local economies. It also further creates dependence on products that are not environmentally sustainable or socially responsible. However, there are hidden pros of Shein's uncontrolled overstock distribution system benefits low-income Mexican communities, yet resellers make Shein's products more accessible, yes, but it also provides a means for, you know, a profitable micro-business, you can call it, when jobs are scarce and where cheap fast fashion options are limited for locals. And there's also this unintended effect of slightly reducing dependence on e-commerce options since the items are filtered through these local resellers. This can actually make Shein's offerings feel more curated and human for those who might otherwise be deterred by the online world. However, this doesn't mitigate the overall environmental and ethical costs of Shein because this brand relies on exploitation and unsustainable production. In sum, Shein's introduction of a credit card targeting Latin America, specifically Mexico, reflects a dual strategy, enticing more people to consume and ingraining the brand within local economies. Yet we have to question the ethicality of encouraging consumption in the form of credit cards, in the form of consumption-driven debt, and expanding unsustainable business practices and in regions already facing a lot of economic and environmental challenges. While there are local benefits for some individuals, I believe these advantages are overshadowed by the broader concerns from Shein's unnecessary fast fashion production, increasing environmental harm, and potential degradation of artisanal hand handmade skills and garments. And as Shein continues its unchecked expansion, it is critical that we scrutinize these moves and push for a more ethical and sustainable path forward. So if you like this video, you are welcome to subscribe and turn on your post notifications. Again, I upload weekly and would love to have you. So until then, peace and love, out.